Well, hello everybody. I'm back and I wanted to actually do a proof for you. My goal here is to prove that radical 2 is irrational. Uh, I find radical 2 to be really this phenomenal number. It's really interesting. Um, it is the uh, first irrational number ever discovered by human beings. And because of the error on which it was discovered, it's called the Pythagorean constant. Now, if you go and read recreational books on math or math history, you see this story that gets repeated, much like uh, uh, George Washington and the, what, what is it, the cherry tree. Um, it's, it gets repeated so often, and it's such a good story, and, you know, you think it's probably uh, apocryphal, it's probably false. But I, I did some research as I was uh, preparing this video here, and, um, you know, sure enough, it appears to have some, some truth to it, that, that in fact, um, back in 2500 BC, there was a fellow named Hippasus, who is credited with the discovery of these, these new numbers, called the irrational numbers. And for that, he was drowned at sea. Now, to understand the passion that would cause that to happen, the Pythagoreans at the time were the dominant philosophy. And they, they preached that all numbers could be expressed as the ratio of integers, but it just wasn't all numbers. They preached that the universe was all numbers. And all numbers, the universe was all these beautiful, you know, rounded integers and uh, whole, uh, ratios of integers. And Hippasus threw this, this monkey wrench into this whole thing. He showed that there were numbers that couldn't be expressed as this simple ratio of integers. And for that, he was drowned. Now, you know, that's all very human if you think about it. The same could be said about, oh, um, uh, the way the planets go around the sun. People were determined that they had to go around the sun in perfect circles. And eventually, you know, that got stepped on. It wasn't so. They, they go around the sun in ellipses. And, you know, even today you see, for instance, global warming. You have you know, people who deny what's so patently true. And, and you know, ultimately, though, like with Radical 2, uh, you, know, you can't keep the truth down. Ultimately, it comes out. And we now know that this type of number exists, and we call them irrationals. Now, the proof I'm going to do here is actually called uh, a proof by contradiction. If you go on in math, you're going to be using this 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 uh, tool a lot. Um, essentially, uh, I think we even use it a lot in our everyday lives. I, I just want to show an instance of that. I've grabbed this Sudoku off the net. Now, uh, if you play Sudoku, you come to this this, this this roadblock quite often. I mean, that's why this guy put this on the net. He wanted to know the next step, and he's you know I can't get any further. Can somebody show me the logic on the next step? Well, you know there's a way to cheat, and, and that is when you get to this point right here, you know, for instance, if this is a 6 or an 8, or if this is a 6 or an 8, you can do a trial or error sort of thing. You could say, well, it's either one or the other. How about I assume it's an 8? And, you know, so you go ahead and you pencil that in, and that means that this has to be a 6, and, you know, that means this down here has to be a 6, and you're off to the races. And you either work to a successful conclusion or the puzzle blows up. If it blows up, that means your original assumption that that you know this was either a six or an eight, you assumed it was an eight. That means that can't be true. That means it had to be a six, and so your original assumption uh, led to uh, a contradiction, and, and that meant it couldn't be couldn't be true. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. That's exactly what a proof by contradiction is. Uh, we are going to assume radical two is rational. It either is or it isn't. We're going to assume it is. And then we're going to show that this leads to a contradiction. And because that leads to a contradiction, our assumption can't be true. It can't be rational. Therefore, it's not rational. So that's the game afoot here. And one of the reasons why I really like this proof and why I wanted to run it past you is because uh, it sort of traces the history of math and, and, and the history of math traces your own history in math the way the things are taught to you in, as we move through grammar school and high school and college you're first given the um, what's called the natural numbers you know one two three dot 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 and you learn to add them and you memorize a lot of facts about them and then ultimately a zero gets added and we call that the whole numbers and you learn how to handle zero and it's exactly the history of math parallels the way this stuff is taught in, 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 in grammar school. And then, you know, the complexity increases and you're given integers and the, and the negative images of the uh, 
uh, whole numbers and you learn how to add these and subtract these and, and multiply them and you know in our class we actually started talking about them as a set and we gave the set a, a name and you know the, the complexity increases as we go on and we start to fill in the gaps between the integers the interstices the uh, fractions in between there and so the question then becomes with all these fractions and all these new points on the line is that it are there any more numbers or, or is the number line complete well it's very easy to show in geometry that there's a distance uh, corresponding to uh, the number that times itself is equal to 2. In other words, there is a distance that we're going to call uh, radical 2. It exists. It's very easy to show. And it's very easy to show it's someplace between 1.4 and 1.5. And the question is, is, is it a fraction? Everything up to now has been fractions. And so is radical 2, can we write it as a fraction? And so, you know, that's right where we're at right now. Can radical 2 be written as a fraction? And we have to be very careful here because I know it's, it's very easy to say, oh, of course it can be written as a fraction. We simply just do that. Any number can be written as a fraction. Just write it over 1. But that's not what we mean. And this question I asked really wasn't a good one. I should have said, can radical, t be, radical 2 be written as a fraction of two integers? In other words, what we're talking about is this. Uh, an integer over an integer. Can radical 2 be written without any square roots at all. Can it be written as a simple integer over a simple integer? And so that's this, the, the, the question we need to answer here one way or the other. And to do so, I really need to, to uh, bring you up to speed. If you've played with numbers, you know these ideas here I'm going to get after. If you haven't, uh, <clears throat> I think you'll find it interesting. Now, look, all numbers between 1 and 2 can be written as a fraction and that fraction will have um, uh, a bigger top than a bigger bottom. And for instance, here is a number between 1 and 2. And any fraction that we pull from between 1 and 2 can be simplified. For instance, I can divide um, top and bottom here by 2 and reduce this to 15 over 14. And, and that's as far as we can go. We can't reduce 15 over 14 any further. If we Break it down to one more step, though. If I go to you know the atomic level, if I break 15 up into its prime factors, and I break 14 up into its prime factors, we really get a feel for why uh, we can't reduce 15 fourteenths anymore. There aren't any threes or fives in the bottom to cancel, and there aren't any twos and sevens to cancel the two and the seven in the bottom. And so the mathematician w would say that 15 and 14 are relatively prime. They have no factors in common, and so therefore um, you're never going to simplify this fraction. What you may not have realized, though, is that if you square this, just, just on a lark, if I square 15 over 14, I get this, 225 over 196. I know that that fraction can't be reduced. And the reason is, is because the prime factors. Really, all we're doing is just increasing them. We're doubling the number of them in the top. But, you know, there's still just 3's and 5's in the top, and there's still just 2's and 7's in the bottom. And so 225 over 196 is relatively prime. You're not going to be able to reduce it because nothing here is going to ever cancel. Now this turns out to be the engine of the proof that I'm going to give you. And because it's so important, I really want to hammer it home here with um, just one more example. And here is the, uh, three halves. Now, a very common fraction. And what I've done is it's already in its prime atoms. Um, I'm just going to square it to get nine fourths. And this can't be reduced because nothing new has been added to it. The top is just all threes and the bottom is just all twos and they're not going to cancel each other. And I can square that and I'd get 81 sixteenths. And if I just gave this to you and said reduce it, you might actually start to do some work on it. But now you know that the top is all threes, the bottom is all twos, nothing's ever going to cancel. 81 and 16 are relatively prime. That's it. That's simplest form. And so these are the ideas that we're going to use to power our proof. And I think we're ready to get started at that. So let's clear the page and let's get after it. We are going to assume it is rational. Proof by contradiction. It's either rational or it's not. We're going to 
say it is. We're assume it's rational. And we're going to show this leads to a contradiction. So since radical 2 is a rational, since that's our assumption, I'm going to write it as a fraction. It, the fraction is there, it exists. Not only that, but any fraction can be reduced, just like I did earlier with 30 over 28. And so I'm going to reduce a over b to its, its until a and b are relatively prime. I'm going to reduce it and simplify it. And so let's assume that a and b are a fraction in the lowest terms, and we can break them up into their prime atoms, and none of them will cancel. And just to drive that home, here are the, an imaginary example of the prime atoms of A and the prime atoms of B. Notice nothing's going to cancel here. And so that would be true also, wouldn't it, if I squared this? A and B wouldn't simplify. And uh, so I think we're ready to get after it formally here. So there it is, A over B. We're assuming it exists. We're assuming it's in simplest form. And now we come to this fact here. This is a, a given that radical 2 is the number that times itself is equal to 2. And since radical 2 is equal to this fraction, I'm assuming that's true, that it's rational, then I could replace radical 2 by what it's equal to with this. And now my next step is this a simple one. I'm going to write it in shorthand. I'm going to write the left-hand side as a square. And I'm going to write the right-hand side as a fraction, 2 over 1. And when I do that, I get this. And what I'm going to suggest to you is I've hit a contradiction. And the proof is basically complete at this time. And to show that, what I want to do is, once again, I'm going to bring in the prime atoms of A and B and make my argument here. Now, whatever this is, it has to reduce ultimately to 2 over 1. That means everything has to cancel here until I get just a 1 on the bottom. But remember, A over B, they're relatively prime. They're composed of prime atoms on the top and prime atoms on the bottom. And none of those things will cancel. And that goes for when we square it. All it does is increase the numbers and the t number of prime atoms in the top doesn't change them and increases the number of prime atoms in the bottom and doesn't change them. Nothing is going to cancel. We are never going to be able to cancel stuff away till we get just 2 over 1. And so what we have here is a contradiction. And that is the essence of the proof. We assumed that radical 2 could be written as a fraction in simplest terms. But we show that that led to a contradiction. And therefore, it can't be a fraction. It can't be rational. And that is the proof. Well, it's quite an intellectual argument. And I hope you followed it. I want to bring the whole thing full circle. And I want to show you where we're at and in the course. We have now a complete number line. The Every point on the line, radical 2, radical 5 over here, negative radical 2 over here, radical 7 someplace over here, and so forth. All the rationals and all the rash irrationals form all the points on the line, and together we call those the reals. And the question then is, is there anything more? Are there any other numbers that uh, lie above real numbers? And the answer is yes, and we will be coming to that before the end of the chapter. Okay, I hope you followed me, and I hope it was worth your time. I'll be talking to you soon.